Welcome to 5 Minutes to Code Programming Basics with your host, Matthew C. Applegate. In this series, we are going to look at the fundamentals of computer programming and hardware. So whether you're hoping to program in Python or to code in C-sharp or to develop in Java, these short guides should help you get to grips with the basics to get started. You won't need to download or install any software, so just sit back and enjoy. In this series, we are going to be looking at input devices, output devices, sensors, memory and storage, as well as internet technologies. Today, we are going to be looking at internet technologies. So let's look at this in more detail. A lot of what will be covered in this video are definitions. The internet allows a large amount of data to travel all over the world, and that information comes in the form of bits. See the binary video for more detail. The rate, bit rate, bits per second, or BPS, is now often referred to as megabits per second, or MBPS, because most modern computers can handle a lot of data fast. Communications between computers and devices can be done using two different physical methods. Serial transmission, which uses a single wire to transfer bits of data, or parallel transmission, which uses multiple wires to transfer bits of data. There are benefits and detriments to both. Serial transmission uses one wire, so it's cheaper, but it's also slower, as only one bit can be transferred at a time. Whereas parallel transmission is considerably faster, as it can transfer multiple bits at a time. However, it is of course more expensive, and can only be used over short distances, as interference can often affect the signal and corrupt it. While communication takes place, it can be done using three different methods. The simplest being simplex. Simplex transmission, which is the sending of data in one direction only. Whereas duplex transmission is the sending of data in both directions at the same time. And finally, half duplex transmission is the sending of data in both directions, but only one direction at a time. While data is being transmitted, if the computer believes there is an error with a packet, it will perform an automatic repeat request, or ARQ, which asks the sending machine to resend the data. Okay, so we have covered things so far occurring during the normal operation of computer system, and when they unintentionally go wrong, let's look at when computers are made to go intentionally wrong. A hacker is someone who tries to gain unauthorized access to a computer or computer network to either retrieve or destroy information. A hacker tends to use a set of tools which help them achieve their goals. One of their tools is malware, which is a piece of software which damages or disrupts a computer. Hackers also deploy viruses, which are software that is designed to corrupt computer files. And finally, spyware, which is another tool used by a hacker that collects users' information through their online activity. It is not all bad, though. To protect users, there are tools such as antivirus, which looks at the files to see if they contain code similar to viruses, anti-spyware, which monitors internet connections, and firewalls, which are a piece of software that protects against unauthorized access from another computer or network. It is a cat and mouse game, and the hackers and system admins are constantly trying to outdo each other. At the center of this ongoing battle are the internet service providers, who provide users with access to the internet by physical cabling to home routers and exchanges. Users use internet browsers to access web servers, which share web pages via internet protocols, such as Hypertext Transfer Protocol, or HTTP. The web servers also share images, audio and video via Transmission Control Protocol, or TCP. This is just a short guide to internet technologies. Now you have the basics, don't hesitate to dig deeper. You can check out the other programming basics videos here and they will help you get started. I hope you have enjoyed the video. If you have, be sure to subscribe to my channel, like the video and comment below if you found it useful. If you want to get started in programming right away, 
be sure to check out my computer art programming tutorials. Until next time, thanks for watching 5 Minutes to Code.